Hey folks, Biden says you have no rights. Check this out. To behave. I respect the culture and the tradition and the concerns of lawful gun owners. At the same time, the Second Amendment, like all other rights, is not absolute. It was, just, it was Justice Scalia who wrote, and I quote, like most rights, the right Second Amendment, by the, the rights granted by the Second Amendment are not unlimited. Not unlimited. And never has been. There you have it, folks. Now, I know what you're thinking. Now, wait a minute. He didn't say you have no rights, but actually he did. Bear with me for a moment. Um, just hear me out. Biden's exact words were the Second Amendment and, or the Second Amendment, just like all other rights are not absolute. Okay, your rights are given to you by birth. From birth, you are granted these rights, not by the government, but by the very nature of your birth and your creation. If you want to get biblical about it, those rights are given to you by God. All right, so... The United States Constitution, the Bill of Rights, neither of these grant any citizen these rights. They merely list them and protect them. To say that no right is absolute, no right is without limit, implies that the United States government can grant or deny your rights. In that case, if that were the case, if that is theoretic, hypothetically, if that, if that is possible, then they are no longer rights, but privileges. So let's look at this for a minute. I want to go through some of the rights because this is something a lot of us learned in grade school and elementary school. I'm honestly not sure if they even still teach this in school. Uh, most people don't even know what's included in the Bill of Rights. And I'm not, this is not going to be an exhaustive list. I'm not going to go through every single Bill of uh, Amendment in the Bill of Rights. But there are a few I want to cover. The First Amendment, and I'm not going to get word for word. I, I might do a video word for word of these uh, amendments, but this is just to, to talk about Biden's stance on these rights. The First Amendment, freedom of religion, freedom of speech, freedom to peaceably assemble, uh, to petition the government for redress of grievances is covered under the First Amendment. All right, according to Biden, None of that is absolute. So at any time, the government can restrict or completely deny any of those rights. And in fact, I would submit that they already have. During the pandemic, what did they do? They went around telling people, shut your church down. You are not allowed to hold service at all. In some cases, you were allowed to have a handful of people, but no more than a certain amount. And in some cases, you weren't allowed to have service at all. Uh, that is a violation of your freedom of religion and uh, freedom to peaceably as assemble. Uh, our freedom of speech has been violated almost constantly over the past several years. Particularly since uh, 2016. You know, it started under Trump when social media started fact-checking and uh, verifying 
using Snopes and all of this crap. And then when Biden took office, uh, it got worse by a multitude. It got considerably worse. All right. Let's move on to the Second Amendment, the right of the people to keep and bear arms. I'm, I'm not going to quote the entire Second Amendment. Everybody's pretty much familiar with that. Uh, but the last line of it is the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. All right. Excuse my language here, but the United States government has done a hell of a lot of infringement on that right. Over the decades from the NFA Act, AT, the ATF, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms in itself is an infringement on the Second Amendment. Anything that restricts your ability to obtain and possess and carry a firearm is an infringement. Now, we can debate the merits of any of these, but you can't deny the fact that it's still an infringement, regardless of what your stance on it is. An infringement is anything that restricts that right. And the ATF and all existing gun laws restrict gun ownership. A background, a requirement for a background check in order to purchase a firearm is an infringement. It's a restriction on the right to buy the firearm. If you go by what Biden said and they increase the age limit to purchase a rifle, that is an infringement on purchasing a firearm. Uh, the third, most people don't even think about that one, but it's essentially the right of people to be free of having soldiers quartered in their homes without their consent during a, any time of peace or in, or in an, a time of war that's not enumerated in a law um, or something to that effect. I, I can't remember the exact wording of that one. I don't have them written down in front of me. But I haven't seen that one violated yet, but I'm sure it's probably on its way. Probably mainly because they can't afford to put a soldier in everybody's house. Back during the 1700s, 17, 1800s, yeah, they, the British could put soldiers up in people's houses because there was such a smaller population of people in this country. The number of people in this country right now, there is no way the government could have a soldier in every single house for whatever reason. Now, that's to imply that the soldier is there to mon to monitor the people in the house. And that might be a possibility, but it could also imply that the uh, soldiers are there being quartered there during like martial law. If they need shelter during martial law and they take over your house without your consent so that they to use them as a form of barracks. That's primarily what that one is for. But that he's trying to say that that's not an absolute right. Just like the Second Amendment. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed is not an absolute right. That's the whole basis of this disagreement, this debate, if you will. The Fourth Amendment to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures. <laughs> well, we already know that one's been violated time and again because the Patriot Act is just one of many, many, many acts, laws, executive orders from the government that violate our right to privacy. On top of that, you have all of the violations of that right by corporations like Google, Facebook, 
Twitter, you name any of those platforms that people use for social media, they collect data about you. Now, they, they put it in their very, very, very fine print on terms of agreement that they collect and use that data. Uh, supposedly just to target ads to you so that they can make money off of you, but I guarantee you it's being done for other purposes. It's being used for other purposes. It's being freely handed out to other corporations, other agencies, without your knowledge. So that one's been violated by both the federal government and corporate America. Uh, if we skip on down to the Ninth Amendment, let's let's cover the Ninth Amendment because this gets into restricting the government and most people don't even think about these things. The enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. Okay, so what that basically says, and I'm not I'm not a constitutional scholar or expert by any means. But my understanding of that is the Ninth Amendment basically says that although these the, the rights are listed here, although these rights are listed here in the Bill of Rights, that does not mean that other rights don't exist or that other rights are denied the citizens. You, you can't assume that just because it's not listed in the Bill of Rights, you don't have that right. That right is still yours, even if it is not listed there. All right, here's another one. This is a biggie for the United States government because they've, ex they've violated this and exceeded this so far beyond the scope of what the founders had in mind. The Tenth Amendment. Powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states or to the people. Again, that amendment right there, that one alone right there, is designed to restrict the rights and powers of the United States government. It essentially says that Um, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights aren't there to list the rights of the people, but to list the powers of the United States and what the United States government can and cannot do. And that anything listed in that, or anything that's not listed in that, is delegated to the states and to the people. So again, I'm not a, I'm not a well-spoken individual. Um, I'm not a constitutional scholar or expert of in any way, shape, or form. But that's my basic understanding of those. But you have to understand when Biden says the Second Amendment, as with all rights are not absolute. That means the government reserves the right to deny you your rights at any time. They believe they can grant or deny rights at their will. The rights listed, the rights that you have listed in the Constitution and the Bill of Rights, which are not exhaustive, uh, because not all of your rights are listed there. They're not granted to you by government. Therefore, they cannot be denied by government. The fact that you're born is what grants you your rights. You are granted these rights upon birth.
That's my belief. That's my position on the Bill of Rights, on any right. The right to walk down the street without being stopped and searched without cause. The right to worship as you please. The right to assemble peaceably for whatever reason you choose. The right to speak your mind without being censored by the government or its lackeys on social media. The right to keep and bear arms to defend yourself from threats, either individual threats to against you or from a tyrannical government. The right to be free from unwarranted search or seizures, as I've said. You know, these are yours by birth. And we've gotten to a point in this country where people believe that the government grants you these rights, and that's not the case. Americans, for the most part, not all, but for the most part, most of the majority of Americans have been programmed to believe that their rights come from the government and therefore those rights can be taken away by the government. And that programming has been intentionally done to give the government more power, more control over you. So, to get back to what I said to begin with, Biden says you have no rights. His words were, the Second Amendment, along with all the other rights, are not absolute. That means he believes he has the right to take them away anytime he chooses, for whatever reason he chooses. He believes the government in general has that ability. We need to make it clear to our government, to our representatives, to our officials that, that they are exactly that. They are our representatives, not our masters. Our government was set up of the people, for the people, and by the people to represent our interests, our ideals, not to tell us what we can and can't do, not to tell us what privileges we have, not to say, this person did something bad, so we're going to take your privilege away. And that's what it comes down to. Biden is treating... And, and it's not just Biden. It's the majority of the left and even some of the uh, Republicans are all treating your rights as if they were privileges to be granted and taken away, granted or withheld at whim. We have to remind them that the government, the president, the vice president, Congressmen, representatives, all of them, they work for us. You remember that video clip where uh, Biden confronted that blue collar worker and said, I don't work for you? I beg to differ. His pay comes from our taxes. We pay his uh, salary through our taxation. And that goes with all uh, politicians. We pay their salaries. All of these salaries that they vote every year to give themselves a raise from our pockets. They vote to give themselves a raise out of our pockets. We pay them, but they, they tell us we uh, have to give them a raise. That's not how it works. They work for us, not the other way around. We are not their slaves. They are not our masters. We as a people here in America, we have to remember that. 
And we have to make it clear to them that we remember that. They work for us, not the other way around. So be prepared. Get ready. This is inching us another step closer to another civil war. Mark my words. Because anytime a government thinks that they are your masters and that they can grant or withhold your uh, rights, a.k.a. privileges or whatever they want to call it, whenever they so choose, for whatever reason they choose, you're taking another step towards tyranny. That's the state of America right now, folks. Be aware of it. Be ready for it. Because this is not something that is going to get better on its own. If we sit here and do nothing, we don't speak up, we don't make our voices heard, we don't send a clear message that they work for us, not the other way around. What do you think is going to happen? They're going to continually collect more power, restrict your rights, and try to control you even more. It's going to continue to go downhill. We're already past the point of no return, in my opinion. It's only a matter of time before we end up in another civil war. There are only a couple of logical, legal routes to go from here. The next logical uh, step, seeing as hell, we are apparently not represented in our own government we have representatives there, but they don't speak for the people. They speak for themselves. They speak for lobbyists. So, technically, we don't have representation anymore. So, the next step would be a convention of the states to... <clears throat> For the states to get together, reassert the state's rights over the federal government, which is as it should be, and say, wait a minute, we don't like how things are going. We need to get together just as the states, and we need to rein the gov uh, federal government back in. Failing that, what's left? Secession. And what happens when uh, states try to secede from the Union? Y you get civil war. So that's where we're headed, folks. Now, understand that when I say we need to stand up, we need to make our voices heard, we need to do something, we need to reassert ourselves as the uh, that the government works for us, not us for them. I'm not endorsing violence. I'm not endorsing a civil war. I'm not calling for violence. I'm not calling for any kind of legal, illegal activity. I'm just saying things have deteriorated in this country so far that that's only, it's almost inevitable at this point. When it'll happen, I don't know. I can't say. It depends on how long people are willing to continue to uh, to be on their knees, subservient to the government. How much are the American people willing to take before they say, like Biden, enough, enough, enough? What is it going to take? How much more is it going to take for the American people to say, no more? You've done enough. That will determine when this happens. It's coming. When, I don't know. Get ready for it, though. It might be in our lifetime. It might not. 
I kind of suspect it will be. <sighs> anyway, that's all I've got. I just wanted to share that with you. That's my views on on his speech. The rest of it was garbage. Trash talk from an incompetent president. That's my view of it. Anyway, that's all I got. I appreciate you guys watching. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Stay safe, folks. Stay vigilant. Keep prepping. Whatever you do, keep prepping. Stack it. Store it. Produce it. Get ready. Train. Because you never know what's going to come. People are expecting a really, really bad summer. So we're, we're going to find out. Get ready while you can. Anyway, that's all I've got. I know I keep saying that. <laughs> I'm going to sit here and enjoy the evening a little bit more. Until next time, folks, I'll catch you later.